I'm Anil Dhawan. I'm a professor of children's liver disease at King's College Hospital, London. Uh, I come from India, north of India. I trained in India and then did subsequent liver disease training in US and UK and I work and live there now. Uh, knowing the both sides of the world, liver disease in children, particularly in India and also in Western world, is diagnosed late. Uh, unfortunately, late that only treatment then available is liver transplantation. But quite a lot of di liver disease could be managed if diagnosed early without liver transplantation. The burden of disease is increasingly recognized. I do not think it is increasing, but we are recognizing it more often. A rough barometer of requirement or the burden of disease would be need of liver transplantation per, pop per population per million population is about 5 uh, per million population, which is quite a lot for a country of the size of India. Now, it could be said that a lot of liver disease in India is, is vaccine preventable. Uh, not quite so. Yes, hepatitis B is vaccine preventable disease, which has already been practiced. Hepatitis A is also vaccine preventable, more with uh, hygiene and uh, clean water. But some of the disease and most the diseases which children have no say in it and the statistics show that majority of children with chronic liver disease that means going to stay with their life uh, is about 75 to 80 percent of children are born with liver disease not acquired later on and that is the burden going to live with them for their life. When the medical treatment fails or surgical treatment fails, liver transplantation is the only option. And uh, in the past, it has only been uh, available to people who can afford economies which could fund the healthcare system and the organ donation. But I am delighted and only pleased to say that uh, India in the last 10, 15 years, particularly, has a tremendous made a tremendous progress in bringing liver transplantation not only to adults but to children too. And uh, children are usually seen as second in line for when it comes to expensive healthcare management, but I am delighted to see that that it is increasingly picking up. Uh, living donation program at this point in time is the mainstay. It could change and should certainly change uh, when the, we do not have to put a donor at risk. But at this point in time, donor operation for pediatric transplantation is the safest and uh, children's only need a part of the liver and a very small part of the liver compared to adults. The success when it, when it works is, is tremendous because the children go back to their normal life. Uh, they can function as a normal child. Uh, they can participate in all the sports program or all the activities in life. They can achieve higher in the school and as they grow older, they can look for a uh, the family and the girls particularly getting fam pregnant and having children of their own and so the males performing in all walks of life. So, when it works, it is worth an investment and we also have to remember that uh, children are the future and if you invest them now, our society will continue to get benefit out of it. And not that I am saying you do not treat adults, but I would like to emphasize that children do need to be given a priority, need to give an extra attention and that extra passion that we all feel for them should be exercised not just given the lip service. Uh, people say that okay, life after transplantation is not quite the same. The answer is yes, it is not quite the same and rightfully so because we are looking somebody else's organ and we do need to pay to due respect to that organ. Uh, somebody has donated it at the risk of their life in living donors and altruistically somebody has donated it after their death or their loved ones. So, we do have a duty of care to look after this organ and uh, my request to people who either in the industry in the work in this field or are the recipient of a liver transplant, particularly young adults to, to emphasize and request that you do not look after it and only request is that make, make sure that you pay attention to your lifestyle, healthy eating, do not do things which we should not be doing, smoking, alcohol. Uh, this becomes an issue when youngsters get into their teens and adulthood because that is a fashion people like to enjoy it. Second is you are supposed to take a medication as till such time we make progress in the research that we can avoid this medication till such time we have to take this medication and if you do not take your medication 
the organ is not going to stay with you. That is a very rough and blunt statement, but that is the truth of it. So, I would like to say that children and liver disease is a real issue. It is diagnosed late. People need to be, people means the pediatricians, the family doctors, the healthcare professionals need to recognize liver disease in our early on. And one simple test is when child is born, we need to look at not just their past stool and urine, but color there is, the stool color is. The stool color should be golden yellow. If it is not that, the child has very likely a liver disease. So, if that is the case, go and see your doctor and insist that they do check for liver disease. Once liver disease is diagnosed, make sure that the right treatment is performed in the right center. And if a small percentage of those children who did need liver transplant, we should promote it, we should look after that population. And then in return, the people who receive a liver transplant, children particularly young adults, they need to look after your organ, mainly avoiding high risk activities, avoiding the food they do not suit us, avoiding toxins like alcohol, smoking and make sure at the end of the day, you take that pill that keeps your liver with you and do not take it away from you. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my views on liver disease in children.